Thank you for tuning in to the Professor Englehart channel. Now today's topic is President-elect Obama's recently released American Recovery and Reinvestment Plan. Now most of what I'm going to be talking about today is the problem we face when we start about start talking about government investment. What I, I'm going to show today is that government investments are actually a waste of resources that could be more efficiently used by the private sector. Okay. Now, in an effort to show this, the first point that I need to make is that voluntarily paid prices are a minimum measure of value. Now, this is clear if we think of it with an example. When I go to the store, I go to a clothes store, I look at all the different clothes, oh, they're all so wonderful, and I find a shirt that I like. I find out the price for that shirt is $15. So, think about it. I say, yes, yes, I will in fact pay $15 for this shirt. I go, I check out, they, I hand them $15, they give me the shirt and the receipt and tell me to have a nice day. Now, there's very important information in this transaction, and that is that I expect the shirt to be worth at least $15. After all, I have two options, right? One, I can have the shirt, but lose the $15, I hand it over, or I can keep the $15 and not have the shirt. So when I buy the shirt, I'm implicitly saying that I would rather have that shirt than the $15. Right? So one way we can think of this is that at minimum, the shirt's value is $15. Otherwise, I wouldn't have bought it. I would have waited until it went on sale. And I could pick it up for 5 At that point, it was worth at least $5. So. Whenever I buy something, a voluntarily paid price, it's going to be a minimum measure of value. After all, that shirt, I might think it's absolutely marvelous and think it's worth $50. If they're only asking $15, i will still pay $15. So the price, as long as I'm willing to pay it and actually pay it, provides a minimum measure of that value for the shirt. That's the first major point. The second point I want to make is that in the free market, resources will be allocated to the highest valued use. Now, let's revisit the shirt example. Let's imagine there are two entrepreneurs that need the same set of resources. Right? One of them is an entrepreneur who is going to make a shirt out of it, and they expect they can sell the shirt for $15. Now, the other entrepreneur wants to make rags out of these resources and expects that they'll sell for about $10. Now, we can imagine them bidding for these resources, right? They go to the resource owner, they say, well, I want to make a shirt, no, I want to make rags. Naturally, the resource owner, if we just make a very simple assumption, they want to get as much money for their resources as they can, this seems reasonable, right? they'll say, well, what will you give me? And we'll have a bidding process that goes on. Now, the rag producer is going to offer no more than $10. Why? because $10 is the total amount they think the rags will be worth. If they paid more than $10, they'd be basically saying, let me take a loss on this, and that'd be stupid. Right? They'd be better off just not doing anything. Right? So they'll offer a maximum of $10. Meanwhile, the shirt producer can offer a maximum of 15 Now, they don't want to offer the total 15 They'll offer just enough so that they outbid the rag producer. So they will go to the resource owner, they'll say, okay, I'll pay you $11. The right producer says, I can't compete with that. I'm only, I can only possibly pay 10 You get it. The shirt producer gets the resources for $11, produces the shirt that's worth 15 and sells it to me. In the free market, this is what happens, right? We have the highest valued use as long as entrepreneurs understand what that value is and foresee it decently they're going to get the resources to carry out the highest valued use. Now we need to contrast this with how government works. Government works very differently. First point I want to make about them is that government funds are generally raised through taxes. Now that means then that the cost of production for whatever it is, like road or bridge, is not necessarily a minimum measure of value. Think about that. Okay, they're getting the money to fund this project from taxes, right? Now, when I pay my taxes, right, say the government says, well, I want to build this new bridge here in your county. 
Um, therefore, we have to raise property taxes. So that means my property tax bill goes up by $100 or so. Now I have a few options. One is that I can just pay the tax bill. Two is that I could refuse to pay it, but then pay fines. And the fines are most likely going to be bigger than the tax bill. Or, if neither of those happens, I, I might end up going to jail or prison. Now to understand how we get into this with evaluation, when I go ahead and pay my taxes, I'm not saying that I'm willing to pay $100 for you to build a road. What I'm saying is, I'd rather give you $100 to build a road than go to prison or be fined. So there's really no connection between the cost of a project and its value. Right? All that we can say is that its value is better than being in prison, which I guess for most people that's not a very high value. Yeah. The second point that I want to make that comes out of this is that government projects are probably going to be too expensive. Think about this. As long as entrepreneurs have the opportunity to undertake projects, they're going to look for every possible project that's going to be profitable, and they're going to do it. Right? They'll do all of the really, you know, the high ticket stuff, the really high profit stuff first, but they'll work their way down to where they're even doing the barely profitable projects. Now, the fact that no entrepreneur was willing to undertake a project so the government had to step in and do it implies that it probably would not have been profitable. Hmm. That means it's the kind of thing where an entrepreneur would be expecting to take a loss, where they would actually be paying $11 to only get a revenue of 10 because that's the value. The value is 10 That's the type of projects the government is going to have left over for them to undertake. Now, this doesn't mean that government projects are necessarily 100% wasted. Right? It, it doesn't mean that they build this bridge and it's totally valueless to everyone. Sometimes it is. But most of the time you get some value. However, that value that you get is in all likelihood less than the cost that goes into it. Hmm. Now, how can this relate back to President-elect Obama's plan? Now, his plan is to undertake a lot of new investments. Right? We're going to invest in green energy. We're going to invest in all kinds of energy-saving technologies. We're going to go out and we're going to build bridges and roads and modernize schools and these sorts of things. And a lot of these, I agree, are going to have value. However, when we do that, first, we're only going to be undertaking projects that the private sector didn't undertake by itself. That means the cost is probably higher than the value. So ultimately, we're wasting resources. Because the reason the cost is high is that those resources can be used somewhere else. If the cost wasn't, if there were no other way for us to use these resources, the cost wouldn't be that high. They'd be essentially worthless resources, and you could buy them for very cheap. But they do have uses, and they have uses somewhere else that is apparently relatively valuable. So, in the end, we're going to be taking resources away from projects that are profitable in the private sector, where people are actually earning profit, are actually providing value, handing them then to government projects, right, which in all likelihood would be taking losses in the private sector. In other words, they're destroying value rather than increasing value to those resources they have, this is not a good thing. This is especially not a good thing when we're looking at having a bad economic time, where we are looking at having, right now, relatively high unemployment rates, looking right around 7% for the country. This is not the kind of time when you want to take resources away from highly valued uses and put them toward lowly valued uses. Yet that's exactly what the major gist of the Obama plan is. I hope this has proved informative. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. If you have any topics you'd like to see me cover, feel free to suggest those as well. Thank you very much, and this is Professor Inglart signing out.